Live from the Bank of Scotland Scottish Premier League, it's Aberdeen against Kilmarnock. Aberdeen's fans have had to endure a torrid season, which, but for Falkirk's failure to bring their ground up to standard, would have sent them into a round of relegation playoffs. They're going to finish bottom in any case, and that's bad enough for a club that shouldn't be in that state. Charlie Nicholas, is it really only about cup final places now for Aberdeen players? Yes, it is, and I think Kilmarnock also, you know, I've not had the best of seasons, but it's all about Aberdeen now, Jim. I mean, I think they're going to make a few changes tonight. Young guys have got an opportunity to get their names forward in Evsco Dow's team for the cup final because it's, it's a team that's lacked progress. They've not really improved a great deal, although it'll be their second cup final. So they've got to go for it. They've got to show a bit of attacking style tonight to really throw a few names at their managers uh, so they can cut off one or two. There's probably five or six that are more, more or less guaranteed, but three or four tonight, I think I've got a chance of making that starting 11. How sad are you for the plight of your former club? Oh, very sad and, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever seen it like this. I think it's had its bad times before, but never as bad as this. I don't think they've really made great progress under Scovdale. He has to take some responsible, uh, some responsibility for it. And saying that, they're in another cup final, Jim. They've got an opportunity to turn a bad season, an awful season, into a respectable one. We won in the, the, the cup final against Rangers. I doubt it, but at the same time, there is an opportunity there they must grasp. So it's entirely up to them. OK, Charlie, it's Aberdeen against Kilmarnock. Let's get to kick-off now and join our commentary team, David Proven. And first, as always, Ian Crocker. Thank you, Jim. Well, Aberdeen may have reached both cup finals, but they've been absolutely awful in the league. Kilmarnock haven't fared much better, so surely the bottom two owe us a decent game tonight. Well, Aberdeen makes six changes from the side hammered at Celtic last week. Some are injured, most are rested. Jim Layton takes a break, giving Ryan Essen his debut in goal. Ian Chess returns after four games out with a foot problem. There are starts, too, for Derek Young and David Dilly. And the Moroccans at Zerouali and Velabed are preferred to Stamprum and Winters, who are on the bench. Yeah, I have to say I'm surprised that uh, Robbie Winters is on the bench tonight. You know, I watched Aberdeen at Celtic Park like last weekend and I thought he played very well. The strange thing is, if you look through this side, Zero Ali and Bellabed, no shortage of talent there. Likewise with Andy Dow, Eon Jess we know all about. So there's no lack of, of talent in this Aberdeen side, particularly from midfield forward. But the one thing I would question is, who in that side is going to put the foot in and win the ball? Paul Bernard, yes, we know all about him. But if you look through the rest of the side, I don't think there's enough grit in there. Uh, and, I, and I know they've been leaking a lot of goals this season, but for me, they don't win enough 50-50s. And I think, once again, we'll see that tonight. Well, Kilmarnock could give a debut to 19-year-old Darren Beasley in midfield in the absence of Ian Durant, who has a groin problem. Gus McPherson is suspended, so Scottish under-21 international Peter Canero comes into a defence, which also includes the returning Jim Lachlan. Starts for Riley and Mahoud completes the five changes from the side that lost at Rangers to Rangers last week. Yeah, Bobby really forced into changing things uh, tonight, but I'm looking forward to seeing this lad, uh, Beasley, and I have to say that uh, when we heard his name tonight, we didn't really know much about him. It does mean that Bobby's had to reorganise the midfield. Matt Riley will be quite happy in the central role, the holding role in front of the back four. Gary Holt probably less so because he doesn't enjoy playing left, but I'm looking forward to seeing Beasley, who we're told has great natural talent. Uh, if he does have a problem, it's perhaps in his mobility, but uh, we're told that, that uh, technique-wise, He's lacking nothing at all, so a chance for him to show what he can do tonight. It's the 150th league meeting between Aberdeen and Kilmarnock, and with nothing at stake, let's hope they give it a go and put on the show. The recent history of this fixture favours the visitors, Aberdeen have only won one of their last 12 encounters with Kilmarnock. Well, this is where it all began for Paul Wright, who hit a rugby park winner against Aberdeen last month, and he'd love to see off his former club again. Wright is the only Kilmarnock player to have scored in their last six games. And if young Ryan Essen is beaten today, Aberdeen will officially have the worst defence in British League football. 82 conceded is currently joint worst with Clyde Bank and Colchester. Can he keep only the Dons second clean sheet of the league season? The man in charge is the unmistakable John Rowbottom. Aberdeen will finish bottom of the Scottish Premier League 
and had First Division Falkirk's ground been up to scratch, Ebb Skodal would have been facing the nail-biting prospect of relegation playoffs. They got lucky, Aberdeen, if there was ever a season to finish bottom, this was it. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, you know, I don't think I would have fancied them in a playoff either, as such as the, the lack of spirit about this Aberdeen side at times. But as Charlie said, a cup final coming up, what more can you ask for? And clearly the door is wide open for quite a few of them. We spoke to Ebb Skodal in the corridor outside the dressing rooms uh, when he arrived at the ground, and he said, yep, the door is open for three or four of them. But as Charlie said, it's up to them whether they want to take the chance or not. Well, Kilmarnock, who will kick us off, spent much of last season sandwiched between the old firm in second place, but second from bottom has been more their territory this season. Bobby Williamson's team have been a bit of a mystery topping the list of underachievers in Scotland. It's the battle of the bottom two for Todry. Yet, ironically, both these teams could be in Europe next season. Cup finalists Aberdeen already are by virtue of the fact that champions Rangers have also made it to Hampden. Fair play placings could yet give Kilmarnock a shout. That's how they qualified last year. Hesse seeking out Andy Smith, but it was cleared by Solberg. Smith with only one goal in 15 games for Killy since his move from Dunfermline. Here's Paul Wright, who's been getting the goals for Kilmarnock lately. McKinley. Mahoud. Essie. Solberg. Trying to fend off Andy Smith. Seventeen years ago this week, in the Swedish city of Gothenburg, Aberdeen beat the mighty Real Madrid to lift the European Cup Winners' Cup. How times have changed. Kilmarnock have a man down at the moment, and it's Mark Riley. Yeah, he took a sore one there. Andy Smith is signalling over to the bench at the moment, Ian, that he can't continue, so we can only assume it was a bad one. But it may have been in the way that... Uh, he landed there, but uh, Andy Smith reckons he can't continue. So could Mark Riley have to go off in the opening couple of minutes? Bobby Williamson managing to raise a smile despite a potential problem. Well, Bobby obviously feels he's OK because he hasn't asked any of the subs to interrupt their warm-up. second longest serving manager in the Scottish Premier League behind Jim Jeffries. This is Canero, who has come in with Gus McPherson, the man at usual right back suspended. Lachlan up towards Smith. David Lilly and Derek Young combining here. Andy Dow, who has been a consistent performer in a poor season for Aberdeen. Mechanis is on the overlap, and he's able to deliver. It's met by Lachlan. Derek White. Gary Holt. Leading a mini charge for... Kilmarnock, he's had an excellent season for them and was on the bench for Scotland recently in Holland, late call up to the squad because of injuries. Kilmarnock won both rugby park encounters with Aberdeen this season, but they drew here at the top three back in October 2 2. Aberdeen were twice ahead in that game, in fact. Derek Young up towards Jess, and there's the return ball, and Derek Young, oh, and it's poked wide in the end by Hicham Zeruali. 
Yeah, it all came from a marvellous reverse ball here from Eon Jess. The first touch, he knows exactly where Young is. Good ball in behind Tosh McKinley. Youngster has the presence of mind to look up before picking Zero Ali out. Couldn't get the shot on target, but smashing piece of football down the right-hand side there by Aberdeen. Here's McAllister. It's out by Mahoud. Here's Lily. Up towards Jess, but too far over him. Phil Wright didn't let it go, but Bernard wasn't full. Derek Young. Derek White. And Derek Young might just latch onto this, and Zero Ali! Oh, what a strike! A touch of Moroccan magic from Hicham Zero Ali! Yeah, and he owes Young Derek Young here as well, Ian, because as the ball sits up here, Tosh McKinley hesitates. Young's prepared to go and attack it and win it, and that's what says the chance of it. What a marvellous finish. Back to front ball from Derek White. And Young wanted it badly enough to win it uh, ahead of Tosh McKinley. I don't know if he, if he struck it cleanly or otherwise, I suspect not, but it was good enough to fly into the top corner. Gordon Marshall blameless. And that's exactly the kind of start that Aberdeen were looking for. Aberdeen off to a flyer, and those are words I've had to use very often this season. Alan Mahood with a rather speculative attempt to respond for Kilmarnock. I don't think you caught it right, Ian. I think you got lucky there. But you have to say, he was there to take the chance in the first place. And he made the most of it. The 50-50 won by the, the youngster. And Zero Ali did the rest. Well, Mark Riley has been forced to go off after taking that knock in the second minute. And Ali Mitchell has come on in his place. Zero Ali unable to keep it in play that time. Information of Kilmarnock's early change. Long serving Ali Mitchell coming on. McKinley. Gary Holt unable to do much with that. Lily. Paul Bernard is impeded by Paul Wright, and that'll be a free kick to Aberdeen, who have made a bright start on a bright evening. Andy Dow delivers, the flag immediately went up as it arrived towards the box. Darren Beasley wearing number 32 for Kilmarnock. And Zeru Ali proving a real handful, joined by his fellow countryman Rashid Belabed. But Lachlan is able to release Holt. Derek Young. Dow. This is Paul Bernard, million pound man. He joined in the mid 90s from Oldham. Canero. Lachlan. Marnock behind early on, they had to come up with something. They're not exactly the most free scoring side in Scotland. But 
This is Paul Wright. Beasley, Wright. Lachlan's overhead clearance and tucked into touch by McAllister. And the Monarch will be hoping something will go their way here. And it was some run by Canero. Zerali has been hobbling a little bit for Aberdeen. And the goal scorer. And the bouncing ball eluding McAllister, it's away by Lilly. Here's Bellabed. Beasley. Cross McKinley, offside against Andy Smith. Well, Zero, Zero Alley does well here, but uh, full credit there to, to Young for winning it in the first place. I don't think he catches that right, and you can see the, the, the man spinning the ball, but he'll, he'll take it anyway. And as you say, he has been limping a bit. I think it's just a knock, and certainly Eb Stoner will be hoping it, uh, he runs that off. I think it must be right in the, the frame for the place at Hamden. Well, the Aberdeen fans are certainly taken to him. trial with Barcelona when he was tagged little Romario probably didn't expect to end up in Aberdeen when he was at the new camp here's Andy Smith and a fine intervention by Thomas Solberg gives Kilmarnock a corner yeah he wanted a bit too much time on this one Andy Smith good ball through to him in the channel decides to take on Solberg he could have played it earlier So the new boy Beasley will take this corner. Cricket. Alan Mahood. Tipping the heels of Derek Young. Another good ball by Jason behind there, but uh, as usual, Kilmarnock held the, the line perfectly here. In fact, he's probably just about level there when the ball's played. He's unlucky there. Side against Andy Smith again. Kilmarnock have only won three away games. In the Scottish Premier League this season, only Aberdeen have won a few on the road. Bobby Williamson will be hoping that the last away game of the season brings some reward. And we finish up at home to St Johnston next week. Lachlan fending off uh, Zerali, but Marshall welly it straight into touch. Locked and out of contract at the end of the season. Bernard. Derek Lilly. Derek Young. And Bernard was caught on the head by the boot of Ali Mitchell then. Ouch. Yeah, I think it's a mixture of both here, Ian. I think it's a high foot and a low head. Paul Bernard certainly stooped to try and get the ball here. You see he's down there. Mitchell leading with the studs, there's no doubt about that. A really painful one for, for Bernard. Yeah, soon enough if, he, if he's got rubbers on him, but if he's a metal stud on there, then that will have done a bit of damage. Yeah. 
Bernard just trying to win it there in, in front of Mitchell. And he's clearly caught uh, quite badly there. And that's a bad one. Some serious patching up to do there. take Paul Bernard off to do it. Paul so Bernard needing treatment. Remains to be seen whether he'll be able to carry on, in fact. Yeah, I think it all depends whether he's, he's concussed or otherwise. In. Certainly, if, it, if it's just a, a cut, they'll stitch him off and get him back on. And I really feel that Paul Bernard is a big, big player for Aberdeen. He's taken a lot of stick this season, much of it down to the price that the, the club paid for him. But I think he's starting to be look more, starting to look more like himself this season. Ep Scorrell just wanting to know whether he can continue or not. And I think Bernard reckons he's had enough for the night. Yes, he's going to play no further part, Paul Bernard. They're going to make a change now, and that's David Rousen who's coming on. Started last week against Celtic, but injured for a fair chunk of the season. Before he comes on, Andy Dow takes the free kick, but it eludes everybody, and in fact a free kick's been given against Derek White anyway. So David Browson can now enter the fray, so both teams in the opening quarter of an hour forced into changes. Yeah, and as I said earlier, that's, that's how they lost their only ball winner. The, the only guy who I think is prepared to put the foot in, and now and again you have to hurt opponents. Paul Bernard is prepared to go and do that and in that respect Aberdeen are now a bit lightweight in there Andy Smith trying to get in Derek White was there too it's a goal kick needless to say Andy Smith thought otherwise Aberdeen have lost more games and conceded more goals this season than ever before in their history. It's been a campaign to forget in the Scottish Premier League, but not in the cup competitions, of course. They've reached the finals of both. Lost to Rangers, uh, lost to Celtic, rather, in the League Cup. They face Rangers in the Tenant Scottish Cup final live on Sky Sports in a couple of weeks. Ian Durant to take the free kicks today. He's out with a groin problem. Zero Ali. Support arriving from Jess, but it just went behind him. And all of a sudden, Canero burst through. Yeah, good positive play there by Peter Canero. And Kawana kids be doing with more of that. This is the problem they have, getting in behind Aberdeen's back line, because both Andy Smith and Paul Wright like coming off at times. Beasley's corner. Away by Solberg. Ian Jess. Giving his O'Reilly something to chase, but a little too much to chase as it turned out. And Josh McKinley can't stop it going for the throw. And Derek Lilly has scuffed that one into touch. David Lilly, that is. I'm going to call him Derek. There are quite a few Derricks in the Aberdeen team tonight. Just increasing their numbers. Here's McKinley. Oh. The veteran defender enjoying a new lease of life at Kilbarnock. <laughs> 35 years of age now. He's making his 15th appearance for Killy tonight. Smith. Gary Holt. 
under severe pressure from Solberg. Kilmarnock still posing a threat. Here's McKinley. Now Holt. Away by Solberg. And Jess is held by Hesse, and that's going to be the free kick. Yeah, great use of the, the arm there from Sean Hesse. Ian Jess playing up front, we, we thought he might play midfield, but playing further forward. I've always believed he was a better player playing off the front, but once again he's up front uh, tonight alongside Zero Ali. Aberdeen hey, hey. seven points adrift off Kilmarnock at the bottom, so they will finish at the foot of the Scottish Premier League, regardless of what happens in the final two games. But They'll be looking to go out on a high, bearing in mind they have the mighty task of Rangers ahead in the cup final. Since they beat Hibbs in the semi-final, the match has gone their way. They'll be offside against Zeruali. Yeah, he's playing right on the last defender tonight. He comes Zeruali. Um, as usual, when we watch come on, we're going to see quite a few offsides tonight. That one. Certainly not up for debate at all, clearly a couple of yards off. Aberdeen, we've just won win in their last 11 league games, but we've just won defeats in their last 11 cup ties. In a strange old season. Tim Lachlan. McKinley. And it's going to go through to Ryan Essen, just. <laughs> Closer than expected that, as Mitchell thought about sliding in. Lachlan. by Derek White, but not very far, although he gets it back from Dow. Mitchell's won it back, and now Canero on another burst, and getting a free kick. He's up for it. Yeah, Shannon looks as if he's up for it, uh, Ian. A real chance to come in tonight in the absence of Gus McPherson, and he's uh, working that whole right side at the moment and, and doing pretty well. Free kick comes to nothing though for Kilmarnock. And Rashid Belabed has it. Although he's sent that one to touch. Belabed joined his countryman, Zero Ali at Aberdeen. Zero Ali has certainly made the bigger impact, as he has done on this game. Tonight, scoring the goal which has given Aberdeen a lead. Yeah, you'd never call him a team player, Ian. I think that's the problem. But uh, a great uh, individual technique, and you know he'll do a trick for you when you need it. And right now, Aberdeen could do with that. Here's Alan Mahood, Mitchell, an early replacement for the injured O'Reilly. centre though comfortably cut out by Derek White but Kilmarnock get it back with McKinley and now Holt Cross McKinley can put a decent cross in and there's the proof and it was just not wide by Paul Wright yeah, it's a good ball and it all came from a very slack ball from Jamie McAllister ends up with Tosh McKinley whips in a delightful front post cross and Paul Wright just couldn't quite get it on target he was outside the front post but it all came from a moment of slackness and that's what Aberdeen have been Punished for all season, giving the ball away too cheaply. He 
obviously has put Holt in here, and Andy Smith is in the middle, but David Lilly ensuring that it's not going to get as far as that. Beasley teeing up Holt. That's not a bad cross. Oh, and Jim Lockland has equalised for Kilmarnock. Lockland Rose, and it's 1 1. Yeah, if Ryan Essen's coming for this, he has to know he's going to get it, and he comes all the way here. Just hung up to the back post, Lachlan above Andy Dow, and Ryan Essen caught in no man's land. Just a complete misjudgment here. He clearly feels he's going to get this, and he ends up nowhere near it, but a good leap nevertheless by Jim Lachlan. Good aggression here at the back post, up early, up above Andy Dow. An embarrassing one for Ryan Essen to lose. That'll be one to learn about for Essen on his debut and he won't keep Aberdeen's second clean sheet of the Scottish Premier League season Andy Dow will take this free kick and Solberg is up there and he escaped his markers and Gordon Marshall had to push it away. Well, it's a terrific chance and he knows it. And Bobby Williamson will be less than happy with the marking here. Solberg completely unmarked, free header. Didn't make it count. And he will stay to await this corner. The giant Norwegian. Jess sends it in. And it's going to come back to him. Dow delivers offside this time against maybe more than one. Right. Smith. Gary Holt will get to this. McKinley arriving on the scene. Beasley. Holt setting up McKinley. And it's straight into the rather grateful arms of Ryan Essen that time. Alan Mahood. Paul Wright. as hard as ever Beasley him of his own man Smith Ryan Essen given a chance in Aberdeen's goal today with Jim Layton arrested and David Priest on the bench Canero. Jess. That's a handball. Aberdeen do officially have the worst defensive record in British League football now. 83 conceded. They've overtaken, if you like. Clive Bank and Colchester. Yeah, the strange thing is, Ian, they've lost 82 goals, and yet Ebb Scottle started the season with a flat back four, and he's going to finish it with a flat back four. And we think losing, you know, given the way they were leaking goals, he might have considered playing with two markers and a sweeper, but uh, he's resisted that. I think he believes what uh, he's doing is going to work for him in the long term. Right. Away by McAllister to Dow. Here's Lachlan, though. Kermanich's goal scorer doing his duty at the other end. Sean Hesse. Put under pressure by Zerali.
Bellabet. Josh McKinley keeping an eye on that one, but it's dropped for David Rowson. Oh, and a mistake by Gordon Marshall! What a howler! A real howler! And David Rowson, with the assistance of Marshall, has put Aberdeen back in front. Yeah, it's not made for the goalkeepers, is it? Gordon Marshall looked as if he was going to take this comfortably. Well, you can't explain that, can you? From 10 out of 10 at training, he would take this one blindfold. Just a moment to lapse in concentration. Now you feel for them when that happens. He's done a Taibi, you might say. Reminiscent of the goal that Manchester United, Rashino Taibi, let squirm through him when they played Southampton. Matthew Letizia was the beneficiary then. David Rowson is the fortunate one here. So Kilmarnock have to come back again and Ali Mitchell gives it a go. They did come back twice in the other league meeting here. Back in October. They were 1-0 down and 2-1 down and ended up going away with the point. Messi back to Marshall who has missed most of this season through injury. He was absolutely outstanding last season when Kilmarnock had the best defensive record in Scotland. But it happens to them all at some stage or other in their career, you would think. They'll be absolutely delighted that we're here tonight. <laughs> I don't think he'll be watching a video of the game when he gets in tonight somehow. to McKinley Smith Paul Wright not much on that Not to forget really for Gordon Marshall but they won't let him forget it from score yeah I mean I think he was probably thinking what he was going to do with the ball after he gathered it Ian Mitchell nicked away from him by Rousen could open up here for Aberdeen and if Andy Dow can get his act together and he can yes oh Zeru Ali made the run but that one is going to be taken by Gordon Marshall Look ahead to the action coming up this week on Sky Sports. Barnsley are Wembley bound, 4-0 up against Birmingham. The second leg of that playoff is on Thursday at 7 on Sky Sports 2. Aston Miller and Chelsea go up for the Cup Saturday from midday on Sky Sports 2 and Sky Sports Extra. All the build-up and all the action. And there'll be no quiet end to the Scottish season, the league season that is. We're at the Edinburgh Derby next Sunday. Hearts hoping to secure the UEFA Cup spot. We don't suppose Hibs would quite like to deny them. And earlier than usual, 
start next Sunday from 2 o'clock. Canero. Easily. Straight at Bellabed. We can try again. Easily to Paul Wright. He's not yet sure where he's going. Now he is. Nothing doing from the cross, though. Nothing at all. Yeah, it's a poor ball in there by Young Beasley. Gary Holt uh, had managed to get to the back post, but he's never going to get in the, the end of that. Bobby Williamson doesn't look too unhappy. It's difficult for the commander players tonight. Aberdeen obviously have the cup final in their mind. They're playing for places, but players tend to switch off when there's nothing at stake. That's uh, shown really in the commander performance so far tonight. Solberg, Rousen. Jamie McAllister, who has been one of the success stories in Aberdeen this season. Here's another, Andy Dow. David Lilly showed too much of it to Gary Holt. Solberg. Rousen. And he's run back initially by the man who's on the ball now. Mahoud. Holt. Mitchell and ceremoniously whacked away by White. Now beyond Jess. Down to his left. McKinley plants that one straight onto the boot of McAllister, who promptly gives it back to Canero. Blocken. Mitchell. Paul Wright. Nero's seen a fair bit of the ball down that side. Josh McKinley. Sean Hesse, who joined from Huddersfield last year, but was also on the books of Leeds United once. Dow. Which uh, Canero was quickest to react. And two players entwined as Kilmarnock carry on with it. And Mitchell doesn't get the throw, McAllister does. Andy Smith proving to be a pest. Locking up towards Smith. All right. Mitchell delivers, but that's uh, going to go straight behind, and Kilmarnock seems to be going nowhere fast here. No, it wasn't a bad ball in, though, from Ali Mitchell. I think Gary Holt was in just a bit too early there. Dropped it into a good area. Look at Gary Holt. He's maybe in there just a bit too early instead of coming on to this. But that's a decent ball played in there. Way by Lachlan. Here's Smith. Lockman remains to be seen where he'll be playing his football next season. Into contact and unable to agree a new deal. So wonder where he will be. Here's Paul Wright. Mitchell. Canero is in support. 
just there. Back it goes to Mitchell, this is more promising. And it's going to come to right. No, it isn't. David Rousen stepped in for Aberdeen. And once again, it was good play by Alan Mitchell eh, in his yeah, decent contribution on that right side since he's come on. He's quite happy playing wide on either side. Combining well with Canero down that uh, right hand side. Recently signed a three year deal. Already been here for almost a decade. Or with Kilmarnock rather than here. Aberdeen leading. And Rousen, beneficiary of a mistake from Marshall to put them 2 1 up. This is Bellabed. He's taken out by Sean Hesse, and that's going to be a free kick and a ticking off at least for Mr. Hesse. I think it's fortunate if he gets away without being shown a yellow here. Well late with the challenge. Tom Robotham, I think he's going to do him a turn here. A word of warning, but no card for Hesse. And what can Aberdeen conjure up here? It's Zeru Ali, took a little deflection. But safely caught by Gordon Marshall. He is more than capable from that sort of distance, as uh, St Mirren will certainly tell you. Scored a great goal against him in the Cup this season. Canero. Four right. Beasley. And... Beasley going for goal, but it was comfortably covered by Ryan Essen. Kilmarnock are unbeaten in their last four meetings with Aberdeen. Is that about to change here at Sunny Petodri? This is Derek White. but met by Lachlan. Here's Bellabed. The supply line cut out by Holt. Beasley has it. And the youngster finds the oldster, McKinley. Up towards Gary Holt. And just poked into touch by Lily. Holt has sought Andy Smith here, but it's quickly within the grasp of Essen, not the long though, because he's released Andy Dow. Still going. Oh, the free kick's been given against Dow for tripping Mitchell. Sean Hesse. Miss header. Now Canero. And he's making decent progress. Falls to ground under a challenge from Rousen, but not many appeals. Zero Ali. Dow. Throwing left to Andy Dow. Bellabed. Gary Holt. Quickly in, but uh, he's conceded a free kick for Manuel Bellabed, who rolled him out for a bit. Yeah, Andy Smith's accusing him of, of having a dive here. I, I don't think so. I think he's clearly taken down there by Gary Holt. And I think it was Alan Mahout who slammed the ball into him as he was lying on the ground. Andy Smith's got a yellow card for uh, his descent. First player booked in this game for having a little too much to say to 
John Rowbottom about that. And two better bed as well. Inside the last minute of the first half, Marshall's come a long way for that. Oh, and he spilled it. Second time around, it was in his clutches. Here's Canero. Beasley. Can they deliver? They might well be able to. And it's back towards Smith. It's a chance here. It's a real chance here. Once again, it was Mitchell and Canero who combined to set it up. Zero Ali's chasing this. All oh, the marshals committed himself. And Zero Ali. It's going to be put in anyway, is it? It is by Jess. Aberdeen are 3-1 up in rather strange circumstances. Yeah, it's not Gordon Marshall's night at all. Once he makes up his mind, he's coming here. He has to get to this. He's a fraction out, but it's a costly fraction. Tosh McKinley trying to get back goal side, couldn't do enough. And Ian Jess gets his award for following up. But it's, it's another misjudgment from Gordon Marshall. And it's just not happening for him tonight. I have to give credit to Zero Ali, though for having the pace to win the ball in the first place. It's Jess's goal, though. And for the second successive Sunday, Gordon Marshall committed himself, came chanting out and didn't get there. George Alves benefited last week. Lachlan. Smith is in near post and it's wormed its way through the throng of players. It's another terrific ball in though by Ali Mitchell. He's getting some great service into the box. No one on the end of it again though. Doesn't come much, doesn't come much better than that if you're a striker. Andy Smith just squeezed out at the front post. The flag is up. Kilmarnock frustrated. It's not going the way of Paul Wright and Co. at the moment, and it's certainly not going his way. Gordon Marshall, a couple of errors. There's only one Gordon Marshall to play. I'm not quite sure which set of fans is singing it, though. The whistle's gone at half-time, and Marshall has gifted Aberdeen a couple of goals. Not much you could do about that one, though, from Zero Ali, which got the Dons off to a flying start. Kilmarnock responding through Jim Lachlan, but then David Rousen's rather tame effort dribbled underneath Marshall. And the giant keeper committed himself here. Zero Ali's effort was blocked, but it was scrambled in by Jess. And it's a rare good day in the Scottish Premier League for the Dons this season. The thoughts of Charlie Nicholas and Jim coming up at half-time at Pitodri. It's 3-1 to Aberdeen. At Pitodri, it's our live SPL game, and Aberdeen are very much in the driving seat against Kilmarnock tonight. They're 3-1 up at the break. Now, for only the sixth time in 46 games this season, Aberdeen have scored more than two goals. 3-1 then, just one booking so far, big Andy Smith of Kilmarnock. But Kilmarnock have had plenty of the first half, so they're 3-1 down, and they've got it all to do to get themselves back into this game. Charlie, your first half views. It's a bit crazy here and there. Well, it has been. It's down to really mistakes and errors than anything else, Jim. I don't think we've had any great fluence in the game. I don't think we've had any great quality shown in the game, mm. which, to be honest, at this time of the season, we're expecting. Did expect Aberdeen to be a wee bit more upbeat than Kilmarnock tonight. I think it's panned out that way, to be fair, although Kelly up front, 
they, they do well enough and they play well enough at times. In, in fact, the young fullback Guerrero for, for me has been the pick of the bunch for Kamarnock players. I really like the look of him, Jim. But they don't have that pace up front. And when you don't have the pace, you know, you've not got options. And that's what's really killing Kamarnock. At the moment, they're passing well enough, no cutting edge. And Aberdeen have got a little bit more cutting edge. And for Aberdeen, Charlie, Zero Alley is a crowd pleaser, isn't he? They love him. Well, he's very much an individual, Dave. He's right. He's anything but a team player. But, you know, he latches onto mistakes. Look at this. I mean, youngster Hesse just. He just delays it. He, he gambles as a striker, he knows. If Darren Young can get this touch as Derry Young, you know, Tosh McKinley doesn't win it. He doesn't catch it clean, that is true. It's just, but it's like a golfer, Jim, it's technique. You won't always get the proper distance on it, but it's getting, you know, the head down, getting the style right. And he gets a little bit lucky, but to be fair, Aberdeen started pr pretty promisingly. Bobby Williamson, Charlie, must have been pleased that uh, Jim Lachlan dragged Kilmarnock right back into this match, though. Well, it was a bad error, yeah. I mean, to be fair to Kilmarnock, as I said, I think they attack well. I think Holt, all the guys from midfield, the fullbacks get forward well. Jim Laughlin, he's got three or four inches on Andy Dow at the back post. Young goalkeeper, you know, he probably thinks he's good doing Andy Dow a favour coming and helping them out. You've got to get there, you've got to get something on it. If you're not going to get a touch, you've got to take the defender, who would be Jim Laughlin. But he doesn't, he does neither. Get it to Jim Laughlin, contracts up. Maybe this could just clinch a move from. Charlie, with the best will in the world, Essen there, had the goalkeepers turned up tonight. What was Gordon Marshall doing at the other end? Well, you can never fault Big Marsh too much. I mean, the two goals that he's let in has been a disaster for a big fella. Last season, he was in magnificent form. He was my goalkeeper of the year. But, you know, he, there's no, there's no defence for him. Oh. The big man's a, an honest big, big lad. It's just like Massimo Taibbi, isn't it? It's very similar, yes, it is. I mean, it's, there's no real pace on it. It's, it's probably taking so, so long and it's so slow in getting to him, he's probably thinking a step ahead where he's going to distribute it. And because of that, he took his eye off the ball and it's a bad, bad blunder. And was that in his mind, do you feel, Charlie, when this happened? Well, because again, he's... A big lack of confidence after that, surely. Yeah, well, Marshall's a type. When he makes his mind up, he doesn't want to, to change it. And goalkeepers are like that. They take the gamble sometimes. But watch him. Watch how he switches a hat onto the left hand there. Seru Ali. Ian Jess looks as if he's falling off a bus and he scored this goal. <laughs> it's like comedy of errors. I mean, he goes to stroke in with his right foot and has his left foot. It's just, it's not great stuff, Jim, but we have to be grateful for four goals. Can Kilmarnock get back into this, do you feel? I don't think so, no. I don't, I don't think there's a lot of goals in Kilmarnock. You know, you've got young Fowler I would like to see introduced. Maybe McCoy to come on, but I don't really see Ar uh, Aberdeen losing another two or three goals. So I think Aberdeen will win this game. So at Petardre, Aberdeen are very much on top. 3-1 up and looking good for an all-too-rare victory tonight. Kilmarnock might have different ideas, though. The second half is coming after this. Let's get to the second half and rejoin David Proven and Ian Crocker. Cheers, Jim. Well, Gordon Marshall has had a major impact on this game. Not quite the impact he would have wished, though. Gifting Aberdeen a couple of goals, really. And both these teams have only managed seven wins in the Scottish Premier League this season. Aberdeen seeking out number eight and well placed to stop the rot of three straight defeats. Three straight defeats, though, is what Kilmarnock are now heading for. Aberdeen in the unusual position of having a comfortable lead in the Scottish Premier League. But don't rule out a Kilmarnock comeback. I'm sure Bobby Williamson would have fired them up during his half-time team talk. That's dribbled off Andy Dow's boot. Smith. Mitchell is not far away. Canero, who has been lively. Beasley. Away by David Lilly. Smith. Oh, two Kilmarnock men. Mahood and Beasley ran into each other then and both are down. Well, I think it may be a head knock uh, as well, and that's why John Robertson has, has stopped it immediately. Alan Mahood looks the more seriously hot of the two. So, no 
moment of concern, they completely ran into each other. I think it's forcing, I think he gets his arm up just in time to shield his face there. It's that kind of night tonight, isn't it? <laughs> just a bit. Kicking each other now. Bobby Williamson side in need of inspiration. But there's generally been a real end of season look about them season they quite like to get out of the way Lachlan scorer of Kilmarnock's goal this is Hesse Gary Holt on towards Smith Kinley away by Rousen As far as Beasley, who finds Mahout. Oh, Solberg presenting it to Mitchell and well struck by Paul Wright, and it was a little awkward for Ryan Essen. Yeah, typical Paul Wright, always looking to get the shot away early. Overrun there by Solberg, and the way the goal mouse are at the moment, uh, that was a bit more difficult than it looked to. After a recovery period in February, Aberdeen have slipped back into bad old ways, losing six of their last seven games, so it will give them a real lift if they can string a couple of wins together, perhaps, before the cup final. They end the league season at Dundee next week. Now, it could open up here for Aberdeen because Rousen has won it back. And offside against Zeruano. Well, they should have played it earlier, David Rousen. All he has to do is knock it in front of Vion Jess. And he wants too many touches on it. By the time the, the final ball is delivered to Zero Ali, he's well off. Smith rising with White. Andy Dow. Ooh, he's going to be caught by Andy Smith. Paul Wright is in the middle, but it's too near the keeper. Well, the final ball wasn't the best, but uh, there might not be anything at stake. But uh, Andy Smith certainly isn't going through the motions tonight. He's fighting for everything as usual. Asking just a bit too much of Paul Wright to get in the end of that. right, Nero has moved ahead of him, Beasley has it again, up towards Smith, who looked like he was being held by Lilly. Jess, no flag against Zero Ali, what an opportunity here, Zero Ali couldn't find the finish, although once again it Squirmed out of quarter Marshall's grasp. I just wonder if he's offside when this ball's played forward, though. And Jim Lachlan's hand goes up early. Zero Ali quite rightly plays on, plays to the whistle. And Gordon Marshall's mind, I think, already on the summer holidays. Oh, Solberg and McAllister almost left it for each other. Mitchell's throw, Canero. And he's going to get a corner off Andy Dow. Maybe there is life in Kilmarnock yet. <laughs> it's 
signal from Beasley. What's that Dumaric got planned? Well, this is where Aberdeen have been vulnerable all season. In. We'll see how they handle this. Beasley going for Lachlan on the far post. From Lachlan. McKinley's cross. And Rasson having to touch it behind for a corner. Yeah, it's a good ball in by Tosh McKinley. Whipped in deep here. Ali Mitchell all, almost on the end of it. And David Rosen did the, the right thing there at the back post. Cracking crosser of the ball, McKinley, but this corner will be taken by the right foot of Beasley. And it's two against two here. Zero Ali has Jess with him. Trying to get back desperately, but Chess has sent it in. And Marshall just got to it. Yeah, good save for Gordon Marshall. That won't do his confidence any harm at all. <laughs> and once again, he makes up his mind to come early here, and he's brave enough. Roasting in full flow here. And that's good goalkeeping there. kick as Canero halted Andy Dow's route. Scores under 21 international Canero. Rousen. Jesse's cross. Himself any harm at all tonight, though Peter Canero very impressive. And I think after the season command I've had, Bobby will be looking to try and get as many of the younger players into the squad for next season. This is Mitchell. And McAllister's intervention gives Kilmarnock a corner. Queen of the South, Jamie McAllister, and a few uh, players have gone on to greater things from there. So Killy to try again from Beasley's corner, and it came off Solberg. So they'll get another corner. Feeling of deja vu as once again from this side. Beasley delivers. Away by Young. Zero Ali. Aberdeen bursting away here. Derek Young. There's Canero there. And he's hitting straight back at Aberdeen. Now Mitchell. Derek White went with him. Zero Ali. Not quite what was needed then. Yeah, you can see what he had on his mind though, The switch there for Eon Jess. Come on, I have pushed right up now, squeezing the game. There's a lot of room in behind. Solberg. Rousen. A little awkward this. And it wasn't a bad try from a player who is rated as very promising. Young. Let's get some news on uh, one of the first half casualties in this game from our man down by the dugouts, David Tanner. 
Thanks, Ian. The news on casualty number one, Mark Riley, is that he'll be x-rayed tomorrow. Ankle ligament damage is suspected. Casualty number two, Paul Bernard, has received 13 stitches for the V-shaped flesh cut in his head. It's taken a long time to stitch him up because his fiancée won't let doctors shape his head. Bernard gets married next month and she doesn't want to spoil the wedding photographs. No sign yet, Ian, of his uh, future mother-in-law, thankfully. <laughs> She'll be here soon, I bet. <laughs> Dean preserving their 3-1 lead. <laughs> Skodal enjoyed great success with Bromby in Denmark, had a short spell with Benfica in Portugal, but without doubt this is his toughest job to date. Messi. The monarch of a throw, but he seems to be taking an age to get the ball back to Tosh McKinley, now he's got it. Bellabed. McAllister, oh, he's given it straight to Canero. Now, Kumana planning a raid on Aberdeen's goal. And Beasley was nearly in, but credit to Rousen who stuck with him. Yeah, good defending there by Rosen here. He's put in a decent shift there since he's come on and substitute David Rosen. Lost his way a bit here at uh, this clock and his spell at Livingston, but uh, back in the frame now. Beasley's corner and Lachlan's header. Gary Holt, <laughs> he's got a kick from Derek Young, but the advantage played. It might be to Kilmarnock's advantage, Smith. Buddy Williamson is going to make a change in a moment in an effort to spark a little life into his side. Kerry Holt, though, is doing that, and here's Andy Smith! Oh, he struck it very well. Yeah, it wasn't far away, and it was down to the perseverance of Gary Holt here. Refuses to give this up, Gary Holt. Out number 3-4 to 1 there, fell nicely for Andy Smith. through the pain barrier and his efforts for Kilmarnock then, Gary Holt. And that might delay the substitution whilst they check him out. Jamie Fowler waiting to come on. He uh, looked lively when he did come on last week against Rangers. Yeah, he did, he. And, you know, once again, it's another chance for, for one of the youngsters to come on and put the marker down for next season because there must be places up for grabs in this uh, Kilmarnock squad. It's another one of the youngsters, Darren Beasley, who is making way for the arrival of Fowler. Yeah, Gary Holt's going to play central now, Ian, which uh, will suit him. He's far happier in there. Harry Mitchell. Oops. Nice can uh, see the funny side of that. been a little earlier in the season with a little more at stake he might not have done <laughs> Jess Solberg <laughs> and Jess slipping it through to Rousen and there's no flag but the cutback was very poor. Yeah, he didn't look up, he had Andy do at the back post, had he taken a look up. Oh, 
Here at Young Low, and Andy Dow pops up in the box. And it's Canero who stuck to him. Mitchell. Lachlan seeking out Paul Wright. Solberg. Oh, and it was far from comfortable for Essen. Andy Smith, though, losing out to Solberg in the end. And now... Bellabed picks out his fellow countryman, Zero Ali. And the ricochet doesn't favour Aberdeen. to make his entrance at Pataudry. Been preparing meticulously for this game oh, all week, no doubt. Yeah, he's had a few double sessions this weekend. <laughs> Canero. Mitchell. Holt. Right. down with the chance to bring it away though the route forward will be via Lily straight on to the head of Pesci is Andy Smith who's about to make way I think for the arrival of Ali McCoist that'll be offside against Paul Wright yeah the problem is that um, bringing on Ali McCoist in it's it's like for like again, and Kilmarnock have too many players who want to come off and take it into feet. Bobby Robinson would bite the hand off you for a Kenny Miller or a Mark Virtual right now, someone to give him a different option. This man knows where the goals are, and he's liable to sniff one out. 37 years of age, he's only managed 23 minutes of football since he broke his leg against Rangers, ironically, back in October. Lachlan. McCoist gets his first touch. Right. Here is McCoist. But not for long. Dispossessed by Solberg. And a nice start from Bellabed. He's still going. And it's picked up by Zero Ali. Oh. Zero Ali and Bellabed turning on the style. That's oh, terrific skill, and you have to say that. Bellabed with the jersey over his head there. And they, they, they would never be described as team players, but they'll go past someone, they'll do a trick. And that's really why Eb Scottle has the dilemma as to whether to play them or not. No one knows what they're going to do. But now again, they can be very, very productive, as we saw there. Andy Dow's corner, Bellabed helped it on. Bobby Winters is going to come on for Aberdeen. A player who never quite fulfilled his potential. He came here as part of the deal that took Billy Dodds to Dundee United initially and they certainly got the better part of that deal. Yeah, just over a year ago, Billy Dodds was playing for Scotland against Germany in Bremen, uh, and as you say, did lose his way, but looked far more like himself last weekend against Celtic. Uh, I have to say I'm surprised he didn't start this one tonight, but he will he will do Ned Scottle's thoughts to the cup final. Make no mistake about that. Winter still waiting to come on. McCoy's trying to slip it through to Holt, but it's away by Solberg. And 
Aberdeen can make for that change now. And Andy Dow is going to make way. He will be a key man for them in the cup final, that's for sure. Dow. <laughs> On comes Robbie Winters. Six goals this season. Five of them away from home, including a hat trick at Motherwell in that extraordinary 6 5 success. And ball from Ali Mitchell. <laughs> Here's Bella Bed. David Lilly. <laughs> Jess. Helping it on, Winters sniffing, but Marshall coming to collect. Fowler. Robbie Winters takes it up on Aberdeen's behalf. Very young. And his brother Darren is also on the books of Aberdeen. Ryan has his full name across the back of his shirt. Ah, this is neat. Bella Bed, not quite so neat from him. Rashid Bella Bed, just 19 years of age. He joined Aberdeen from the Belgian club Molenbeek. His only goal came at Christmas against Dundee United, but he's mainly been on the bench. Uh, oh, he had a little kick at uh, Bellabed then, and unfortunately for him, John Robotton was not far away. Yeah, John Robotton right on top of this. I don't know who's fortunate. He knows his, his body check, but it's the, the needless kick there. He gets away with it, and he's lucky. Derek White's clearance. Hoisted up by David Lilly. Mahood. Lachlan, right, beavering away as usual. Yeah, the look where, look where it is in the ball right back inside his own half, ten yards inside his own half. And that's the problem that Kilmarnock have. No one to run in behind. 20 minutes to go. McAllister. And again. The hoop taking it off the toes of Bellabed. Here's Ali Mitchell. That's going to clear the goal, though. Disappointing effort. Skodal probably felt like he walked into a nightmare after what has been a rough old first season at Aberdeen. But a strange one, as we know, in the league they've been pretty abject, but in the Cups they've got to both finals and they will be in Europe next season thanks to the fact that Rangers reached the Tenant Scottish Cup final and they have other European competitions on their mind and the UEFA Cup McAllister hoping his keeper is going to come 
And his keeper does come, Ryan Essen, 20 years of age. It should be older than 20. Here's Jim Layton, who'll be 42 this summer, given a rest today. But destined to bow out at the cup final. Yeah, but the goalkeeping position is a real problem for Ev Skoda. No question about that. Essence clearance has come to Mitchell. Aimed towards McCoyce, but would already look favourite to win it. Rousen. So are Kilmarnock going to make a game of it in the closing stages? All the goals came in the first half. That's going to be offside against McCoy, but the referee... Well, he was going to let them get on with it, but now he has pulled it back. McCoy had strayed. Aberdeen sitting pretty on this lead. Jim Lachlan. Here's Mitchell. Canero. Bella Bed. And Winters could be in. He is in. Aberdeen going in search of number four, and Winters for Bellabed, but he couldn't find a way through. Yeah, I think it's Hesse who does enough there just to, to block him. Kilmarnock stretched in the left-back position there, Winters had time to look out, look up, it's Bellabed he picks uh, out there, and Hesse does well. There was a bit of a scuffle after that incident and John Robottom going across to his linesman. And what will the outcome of this be? No nonsense referee, John Robottom, that's for sure. I think it's tried where possible tonight, Ian, to let the game flow, and he's, he's been reluctant to produce yellow cards tonight, John Robottom. But he has to act on the instruction here of the assistant, who clearly has seen something. I'm not sure he can spot who did what, though. It's uh, not a long conversation. Come on, boys, get rid of it. On row bottom. He's summoning Hesse, I think. Oh, it's a red card for Sean Hesse. He's sent off. That must have happened when the two of them are on the ground, Dean. It's the only time it could have happened when he and Bellabed were on the ground after the ball had come in. Well, there's afters, but Sean Hesse has been sent off, and Kilmarnock are down to ten men. Now, what has John Robottom decided to give here? Well, it has to happen just here. tell from from that angle is he given a, I mean, he's given a penalty yeah he's given a penalty well after the long conversation with his linesman in mysterious circumstances now and what's been a strange old evening in Aberdeen they have a penalty kick so Thomas Solberg has the chance to make it 4-1 can he take that chance? You better believe he can. And amid a mystery, Solberg scores on the spot. That's a good penalty, just strokes it inside the right-hand post there. There's something of a bonus for Aberdeen, the fact that the penalty was awarded at a tolly. And often you'll see a bit of afters when two players fall onto the, the ground here. And Bellabed clearly felt he was kicked on the ground. The assistant looking from a, the ideal position on the far side. And even though there didn't appear to be much in it from our angle here, 
clearly saw something. It's one of their mates, isn't it? All sorts of goings on. Sean Hesse has shown a red card. Here's McQuist. And the overhead kick was from Jamie Fowler. Yeah, at least Ali McQuist was prepared to run in behind Darien. That's what they've lacked tonight. Aberdeen appealing for offside, but he had timed his run perfectly. It's a lost cause. Of course, now for Kilmarnock. Oh, Here's Canero. Disappointing performance from Kilmarnock. And a disappointing season for them. And Auckland was taken out, so that's uh, another yellow card, which is brandished at David Rowson. Yeah, I think John Robotham decided it's time to clamp down now, Ian. A few rash ch challenges going in. comes to nothing at all. So John Robotham involved in a touch of controversy in sending off Sean Hesse on the advice of his linesman and awarding a penalty which was converted by Thomas Solberg. Bobby Williamson's Kilmarnock on the end of a battering in Aberdeen and not many people have been on the end of something like that this season. Well, a few years ago, I remember watching Barry Fry's Birmingham win 5-0 at Barnsley. It's over to you, Trev. Thursday at 7, Sky Sports 2 in the second leg of that playoff semi-final. Aston Miller and Chelsea go up for the Cup Saturday at 12 noon on Sky Sports 2 and the Sky Digital viewers on Sky Sports Extra. And the Edinburgh Derby ends the Scottish Premier League season with Hart still trying to secure a UEFA Cup spot ahead of Motherwell. How Hibs would love to deny them an earlier than usual start Two o'clock next Sunday. Hearts yet to beat Hibs this season. Jim Jeffries is sitting at home now going, he did have to mention that. Didn't he? remaining so here's Mahoud Gary Holt has dropped back into the defence then after Hesse's red card he also dropped back there against Rangers last week here's Rousen who's got a yellow card so he has to tread carefully he's presented it straight to McKinley Oh, and a uh, misunderstanding <laughs> between Thomas Solberg and Ryan Essen, which kind of sums up the afternoon, the uh, evening here. Yeah, I don't think Essen's too happy on my soul there. He obviously gave him a good early shout here. And Solberg decides to take it for a walk. Manuk well ahead on corners, but well behind on goals. Right, here's Fowler, and right again. Through to Essen it goes. And the 
too many days to celebrate in the Scottish Premier League this season, Aberdeen. McCoist, warmly greeted by the fans. Canera and Mitchell chasing. Fowler is arriving in the middle, but uh, more in the middle than, than that. Gary Holt, Winters quickly in on him. Over the top from Lachlan. Kilmarnock's throw. in the middle but it's too high for him <laughs> a missed kick from Derek Young and Mitchell gets the corner maybe 20 at the end of the month Derek Young catching up with his squad number Mitchell delivers not exactly many <laughs> Kilmarnock men around better bit that's one way to clear it Cross McKinley and McCoist headed it wide let's have a look though at a closer incident up the other end yeah, let's see if uh, we can clear this one up in. Certainly from the other angle, we didn't see too much. Here's Bellabed on his way, squeezed out by Hesse. He says he must have good eyes, so that's all I can see. <laughs> Here's Alan Mahood. Jess. Are Aberdeen in the mood to hit the high fives, I wonder? Zero Ali who started the scoring spree for them, but that's going to trickle behind for a goal kick. The Aberdeen fans love him, though. He's an entertainer. Been away on international duty quite a bit since he joined Aberdeen with the Moroccan Olympic squad. McCoy's helped it on. Paul Wright chasing, which is collected by Essen. Monarch well beaten now. And they will be more than happy to see the end of what has been a miserable season for them. And I wouldn't have thought the red card for Sean Hesse has helped their fair play facing too much. They did have a hope of getting into Europe via that route, as they did last season. Now Winters, and Rousen is in the middle. It's gone behind that. Oh, it's a corner. Yeah, Robbie Winters thought he... It was a handball there, used by Jim Lachlan, appeals for the penalty. And once again, Winters took up good position there on the right-hand side. And it does strike Jim Lachlan in the left arm, but it certainly wasn't intentional. Go on the 
Now the referee has spotted a bit of argy-bargy between White and Holt, and it all ends in a handshake. So Jess is corner. There he is again. Zero Ali. On a burst towards the box. Here's Jess. Crowded out in the end. Canero. Solberg has this covered despite the presence of Jamie Fowler. And whacked into touch by Essen. The only blot on the Aberdeen landscape today is the fact that they do now officially have the worst defensive record in British League football. 83 conceded. Mitchell. Right. Mitchell. Canero. Just about keeping his feet. Gary Holt, cut out by Derek Young. Young over the top, offside against Robbie Winters, and time for Peter Pitt, your man of the match award, David. I think he comes out of Ali, uh, Ian, simply because of, of the entertainment value he's given us tonight. So we weren't expecting too much, but I think the most of the entertainment has come from this man. Managed to get the goal as well, of course, so he's my back of Scotland man of the match for tonight. Also giving Epps Godel a bit of a headache in terms of the, the cup final because he's been out of the frame, but uh, he must have, have done enough tonight to have made an impression on, on Scotland. Aberdeen just seeing this one out now, we're in the last minute of normal time. Canero. McCoist. for offside by Gordon Marshall, but look at the skill here, that delightful play. And the presence of mind to look up, and it leaves Robbie Winters with a tap in. But that's superb skill from the Moroccan, and we've seen a fair bit of that from him tonight. Robbie Winters, seventh for the season, only his second, in front of the Pitotri faithful, Zara Ali, the creator. Aberdeen are usually on the other end of score lines like that, not today. They lead Kilmarnock 5-1. Well, Aberdeen made six changes from the side that were beaten 5-1 at Celtic last week. And although M. Skodal may have his cup final team in mind, there uh, are surely a few places up for grabs, and there uh, will be one or two who've impressed him here. Oh, they could be in for six here, it's Jess, and she just whipped away from him by Loughlin.
Here's Lachlan. It's all over. And it's all smiles for Aberdeen for a change in the Scottish Premier League this season. Vincenzo Rali masterminding a 5-1 victory for F. Skodal's Dons. And that will give them a big, big lift ahead of the Tenant Scottish Cup final against Rangers in a couple of weeks. Zero Ali started it all off with that one. And a mistake from Gordon Marshall allowed David Rowson to restore the Don's advantage after Killian had equalised. Zero Ali had a hand in the third as well, finished off by EMJS after Marshall had committed himself. Sean Hesse was sent off in a strange incident, which also led to a penalty for Thomas Solberg. And then it was all rounded off when Zerali broke into the box and unselfishly teed up Robbie Winters for a tap-in. Convincing stuff, really, from Aberdeen, Kilmarnock, very disappointing. It finishes on a wonderfully sunny evening in Patondry, Aberdeen 5, Kilmarnock 1.